commission meeting for uh, Thursday, March 16th at 630. Rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, and we'll go ahead to, to Angela for a roll call of commissioners. Commissioner Wood? Here. Commissioner Melcher? Here. Commissioner Parker? Here. Commissioner Branson? And Commissioner Wolfius and Journey are excused. They called and let me know they were going to be out. All right. So this is a portion in our uh, public hearing for public comment. If there's anybody wishing to address the commission, with things that are not on the agenda for tonight, now would be the time to do that. As there are none, we move on to the meeting minutes for March 2nd Planning Commission meeting. Anybody have any corrections or addendums to the very, very short minutes? I'd make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, moving on. Keep up on momentum. All right, we're going to go ahead and open up the public hearing for the conditional use permit CU 23 01 at 632. Um, the applicant is requesting a conditional use permit to allow for a Four lane public recreational vehicle waste disposal facility, wastewater disposal facility, including a potable water fill station. The proposed facility will be located off 24th Avenue, south of the railroad tracks, and west of the FAC site for the homeless. The applicant is applying for a conditional use permit per Sweet Home Municipal Code, Chapter 17.25.040B. Um, recreation oriented uses or activities not listed as permitted permitted in the Sweet Home Municipal Code 1725040F, government structure or use of land or public utility facility. Tax lot 2204 contains approximately 216,493 square feet and is in the recreational commercial zone. So I will go ahead and uh, Ask if anybody has any personal bias in regards to this application. I do not. I have none. Okay. Any, um, sorry, any conflicts of interest? No. No, I have none. Any ex parte information? Nope. No. No, I have none. All right. So we'll go ahead and go over to Angela for our staff report. Chairman, can you open the public hearing for me, please? I did at 6.32. Oh, did you? I'll do it again. Am I really getting that done? That's okay. <clears throat> That's All right, okay. staff report. <clears throat> All right, as you read, this is a conditional use permit to allow for a four-lane public recreation wastewater disposal facility, including a potable, potable water filling station. Um, the subject property is not in a special flood ha hazard area. The subject property does not contain inventory wetlands. The subject property has frontage and access from a joint private joint use private access easement off 24th Avenue and through the north portion of the City of Sweet Home Public Works Yard. Um, it has access to City Water Services and 24th Avenue with a utility easement co-located with an access easement. Sanitary sewer connection can be made along the southern border of the property connecting to the city main line. <clears throat> the use is listed as a <laughs> the use is listed as a conditional use in the underlying district and complies with the development requires of the underlying zone. Uh, staff finds that the subject property is in the RC zone. The applicant is requesting a conditional use permit to allow for a four-lane public recreation vehicle wastewater disposal facility, including a potable water filling station. The applicant is applying for the conditional use per Sweet Home Municipal Code Chapter 17.25.040B, recreation-oriented uses or activities not listed as permitted on Sweet Home Municipal Code 17.25.040F, governmental structure or land use of land or public utility facility. The proposed use shall comply with 
the special standards listed in Sweet Home Municipal Code Chapter 17.25.050D for this application to comply with all applicable city codes and state and federal law, this application may require additional permits if this application is approved. Staff recommends a condition of approval that prior to operation, the applicant shall obtain all required local, state, and federal permits. The applicant shall submit copies of all required permits and licenses to the City of Sweet Home at Community and Economic Development Department for inclusion in the record of CU 23-01. The characteristics of the site are suitable for the proposed use considering size, shape, location, topography, and location of improvements and natural features. Staff finds that the subject property is currently a vacant bare land parcel. However, the historic use of the property was industrial. The site size, dimensions, location, topography, and access are adequate for the proposed use. The proposed development is timely considering an the adequacy of transportation systems, public facilities, and services existing or planned for the area affected by the use. Staff finds that the proposed public recreation vehicle wastewater disposal facility and potable water fill station um, is timely. The easement through the city of Sweet Home property abutting 24th Avenue shall allow for adequate transportation needs to the facility. City water and sewer services are available for the site. The proposed use will not alter the character of the surrounding area in a manner which the sustainability limits, impairs, or precludes the use of the surrounding properties for the primary uses listed in the underlying zone. Staff finds that the abutting, abutting the subject property to the north is a vacant lot zoned recreation commercial. Abutting the subject property to the east is a public facility zoned industrial. Abutting the subject property to the south is a mixture of commercial and residential uses zoned highway commercial. And abutting the subject property to the west are commercial uses zoned highway commercial. The proposed use will not alter the character of the surrounding area. Any negative impacts of the proposed use on adjacent properties and on public can be mitigated through application of other code standards or other reasonable conditions of approval that include but are not limited to, limited to those listed in this chapter. Staff finds or staff has not identified any negative impacts to adjacent properties. To ensure compliance with the standards listed in Sweet Home Municipal Code, staff has included proposed conditions of approval that are listed in section four of this chapter of this report. Pardon me. Conditions of approval. In approving a conditional use permit application, the Planning Commission may impose, in addition to those standards and requirements expressly specified by this chapter, additional conditions determined to be necessary to assure that the proposed development meet the decision criteria as well as the best interests of the surrounding properties, the neighborhood, the city as a whole. The provision of the Sweet Home Municipal Code allows the Planning Commission to impose conditions of approval. This is an opportunity for the Planning Commission to determine if conditions are needed to ensure compliance with the decision criteria as well as the best interests of the surrounding properties, the neighborhood, and the city as a whole. To ensure compliance with the standards listed in the Sweet Home Municipal Code, staff has included proposed conditions of approval listed in Section 4 of this report. These conditions are primarily a customized list of existing local, state, and federal standards that apply to the application. If the Planning Commission approves this application, staff recommends that a condition of approval listed below be required in order to ensure that the applicant that the application is consistent with the findings in the review and decision criteria in Section 3 and as required with the Sweet Home Municipal Code and other provisions of law. Appeals to the Land Use Board of Appeals, LUBA, may only be based on review and design criteria contained in Section 3. Recommended, recommended conditions of approval for CU 23-01. One, the final configuration of the proposed four-lane public recreation vehicle, wastewater disposal facility, and potable water fill station shall substantially conform to the plot plan reviewed in this application um, as attachment B. And number two, the property owner shall obtain and comply with all applicable local, state, and federal permits as re and requirements. The applicant shall submit copies of all required permits and licenses to the C Sweet Home Community and Economic Development Department for inclusion in the record of CU 23-01. In acting on a conditional use permit application, the Planning Commission will hold a public hearing at which it may either approve or deny the application. If the application is denied, the action must be based on the applicable review and design criteria. If approved, the Planning Commission may impose conditions of approval. Staff's recommended conditions are included in Section 4. Appeal period pursuant to ORS 227.175, the Planning Commission may establish an appeal period of not less than 12 days from the date of the written notice of the Planning Commission's decision is mailed. Staff's recommendation is that the Planning Commission's decision on this matter be subject to a 12-day appeal period from the date that the notice of decision is mailed. 
After the Planning Commission decides, staff recommends that the Planning Commission direct staff to prepare an order that is signed by the chairperson of the Planning Commission. The order would memorialize the decision and provide the official list of conditions, if any, that apply to the approval if the application is approved. After opening the public hearing and receiving testimony, the Planning Commission's options include the following. One, move to approve application CU 23-01, which includes adopting the findings of fact listed in the staff report and the conditions of approval listed in Section 4 of the staff report. The setting of 12-day appeal period from the date of the mailing of the decision and hereby direct staff to prepare an order to be signed by the chair to memorialize this decision. Two, move to deny application CU 23-01, which includes adopting the findings of fact including the setting of a 12-day appeal period from the date of mailing decision and hereby direct staff to prepare an order to be signed by the chair to memorialize this decision. Three, move to continue the public hearing to a date and time certain or for other. This is my staff report. Do you have any questions? Thank you very much. Anybody have any questions for staff? Will this be open to the public? Yes. And will there be fees? So it will generate revenue? Probably not a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's the, the and the, the applicant will probably ask answer better, but the intent is for it to at least pay for itself. Yeah, OK. And um, the city's interest is to ensure that. Wastewater usage doesn't negatively impact our system. But also there will be a potable water filling station, which um, is better than what we currently have when we have people fill up with water, they go to our. Right now it's the wastewater treatment plant um, and our staff uh, has to help them automate system that would be a better situation for us. Is the water metered? The water this this would involve um, the the water would be metered um, and the, the hopefully the, the we would have it set up so that the waste disposal rate would take care of whatever volume that we would expect from okay. the water. That's all. All right, at this time I would invite our applicant to come forward if they wish. Or both applicants, you can we are up a second chair if you'd like. Uh, after having a seat, if you could state your name and address for the record, that would be great. Sure. My name is Andrew Rappé. I'm an engineer with Udell Engineering in Lebanon. I sit 63 East Ash Street. Um, I'm the project engineer on the project. Uh, I'm Tristan Davis, the operations supervisor for Lynn County Parks um, out of Albany, 3010 Ferry Street, uh, southwest in Albany, Oregon. If you guys could, for the record, just quickly state the purpose of the application and, and what we're hoping to do here. Uh, the purpose of the application um, was for us to get the proper zoning to move this project forward and start our development there. The county has actually gone out and been awarded a grant um, for funding for construction of the project. Um, you guys have any questions for our applicants? Just by way of yes. point of order, it's a conditional use. Not a conditional use, use not zoning. Mm -hmm. Correct. Will there be an intent, an attendee on site or just People just drive through. Is there money collection? How does that all work? Um, our intent right now is to use an automated system, and we've used one of those uh, pretty successfully in the county at our River Bend County Park for like the last three years. Okay. It doesn't require staff to be there to monitor it. I do have staff moving through seven days a week, so my intent is as they come through town, they would stop in and check on the facility. My long-term goal is to have security there, so it'd be 24 hours a day monitored by uh, video surveillance. Will the area be fenced? Um, <clears throat> it, maybe we hadn't decided that yet. My intent would be is to to fence it just to make the guests be safer and secure the property would be my intent. Is there any like hazards like if a kid was out there and lifted a lid or something of falling in or is it too small? No, the design and especially with the automated system, the automated system is locked until you okay. like swipe your credit card to pay for your dump fee okay. and then it releases the lock for a timed period. And okay. it's I mean, the opening going into these is like four inches. So yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, pretty small. Because okay. I'm assuming this is hooked directly to the sanitary sewer. It's not a holding tank that pumps out. It's uh, straight in. 
The only reason I think you would have to have a holding tank is if the engineering required some sort of pump um, pump system, but I don't think that was required. Yeah, it's not necessary. The sewer main is pretty deep in that location, oh, so the yeah, yeah. direct connection. Cool. Is the intention for it to be a day use facility or a twenty four hour access? Um, I think we're going to, I think our plan with that was uh, initially was to be to to be a 24 hour access for the public to come through because we always with our department prefer to lean towards allowing the public access. <laughs> if it becomes a problem in our design, we're going to basically put a gate in there so we could if there are issues after hours and we need to limit the time. And we would at that point pursue, you know, looking into the operations of how do we limit the public's time there. But the intent would be it would be 24 act 24 hour access to start. Would you have security camera? I would. Outside? That's my intent is to okay. put an internet connection in and have okay. have 24 hour surveillance on it. So with this, are we gonna require a lighting plan be submitted as if it I mean 24 hour access? Are we worried about light pollution into the the residential section to the south of this? That, that could certainly, we hadn't discussed lighting. Um, obviously, if they're, if they're going to do 24 hour, you would need lighting, but um, with the size of the property, I think you could plan the lighting to, to not really be anywhere close to the uh, neighboring youth. That being said, um, it's first perfectly within your authority to add a condition. Um, that something be submitted. I don't see that as being a, a huge barrier. Okay. No. So with it being a public use facility, I'm going to make the assumption that we're going to have signage on on the street directing people to this facility, 20. or are we going to leave it unsigned for a while to see based on functionality and then add signage? Uh, or how how would someone find this if they didn't know about it? We're going to we're going to advertise it in like our we have a, a user guide that we put out to our guests um, and advertise it that way. Uh, we will the intent would be work with ODOT and get signage up on Highway 20 like we've done with our other parks and facilities. Mm -hmm. And so that requires working directly with ODOT to get signage out on the main highway. OK. Given the traffic we have with boats and RVs, um, I think just some signs on Highway 20 and everybody would get the picture real quick. Yeah, I mean a facility of this size with this design, which it <laughs> looks pretty fluid. Um, I think word of mouth is going to spread it pretty quick. I had one one last question. Everybody's kind of jumped in and got gotten the questions I have, which is fantastic. The I noticed there's some garbage cans and a, an area for recycling. Is that something that Lynn County is going to be servicing as part of their grounds with the other parks, or is this going to be contracted out to the garbage company to come service? It would those? probably be contracted is the direction I'm going. Staffing at this point is mm -hmm. with every public agency is a, is a struggle, yes. certainly is for us. So we're leaning more towards contracted services. So it's something I'd probably just put that on a garbage route with the sanitation company. And okay. I mean, down the road, if it if it got to the point where I had staffing levels where we could we could handle that, then we would certainly take it on. But I think to start with, we would just put it on a route. Yeah. I think the design is going to allow for easy garbage service, so that's nice. Bypass lane. Well, I don't have an RV, but I'm I know a lot of people that do, and this is going to be something mm -hmm. that's pretty welcome. Yeah, nice, easy, clean facility. Does anybody else have any questions for our applicant? I've had mine answered, Me so. Do uh, you have anything? No. Nope. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. I encourage you to stick around in case we have any other questions that pop up. But thank you so much. Thank you. All right, and we will continue to go through the motions. So if there's any proponent testimony, um, those wishing to speak in favor of the application, now would be the time to do so. Any opponent testimony, those wishing to speak against the application? 
and any neutral testimony not for or against just wishing to be heard. As there are none, we will close the public hearing for discussion amongst the commission at 6.50. I don't know. I think this has been something that's missing mm -hmm. um, in town. Yeah. So, especially if we do want to expand our recreation. Yes. Here. And I, you know, originally I was thinking the spot was kind of weird, but at the same time, as that other property across the tracks is be mm -hmm. developed, yeah. and at some point possibly Quarry Park and the Jamboree and all that mm -hmm. down there, it actually is a really good spot. Yeah. For something like this, and it's not a very developable piece. Developable piece of property. It probably wouldn't be too desired. No. Considering its location. Yeah. Right next to the tracks, tracks and, and the homeless community. And actually, you know, I didn't think about it till just now, but the homeless community having access to this, whether yeah, the right place. Yeah. It is. That would be amazing. I'm assuming at some point in the future, as that mill property does develop, there probably will need to be a signal there. At 24th Avenue? Where this come, or 24th and Main? Main. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the plan is, uh, there is a, a an approved crossing order with ODOT for an extended 24th Avenue across the railroad track. So there would be, when development occurs, there will be a, a approved fully developed crossing. A so signalization at Main and oh, 24th. Uh, the traffic signalization, that uh, that's similar. As the mill it, property develops. It would be mm -hmm. yeah. development driven. Yep. And that would at the time be determined by ODOT as well. The exact um, type of signal and the exact threshold would be dependent on that. Yeah. But uh, that that's probably something that will be discussed as part of our transport transportation system yeah. plan update mm -hmm. that we're about to kick off, so. Yeah. I think that something like adding some sort of lighting plan to make sure we're not imposing on the um, community that is living right against that property right. line. Um, and also, I'd really like to see something that it says that there will be a fence and a gate when it opens. So just in the event we find that there is issue with you know, people late at night being at that property, that there is something already there that we can take. And also to ease the mind of the residents who live there to know that even though there might be 24 hour traffic moving around behind their properties, that there will be a fence and something to keep them from. Just kind of meandering area. into their, mm -hmm. yeah, correct. I guess that would be my biggest thing, I think, was the lighting just to make sure that we weren't blasting new LEDs into the residential area. I, and fencing, I think also when you mentioned the, because um, I had not seen the um, recycling and trash yeah. on the property, which I think will be great, but it will also keep people who in the residential area from dumping their things over there. Because I could see that area may become a popular dumping site for the community yeah. <laughs> to bring their additional it's, trash. It's yeah. Because that homeless site right next to it is it probably almost on a daily basis after. Yeah. I would, I mean, that's a good problem to have, I guess. It's just not getting thrown out into the street. Right. Well, and the, the nice thing is hopefully the the homeless the shelter facility area will have, you know, place waste management, and then it can be part of the route to, you know, pick up there. Pick and up I, here. I will add that um, next door, the, the FAC facility has security on mm -hmm. site there, mm -hmm. and no they dumping do. is permitted there. Any donation hour. of materials that are intended to give to the home have to go through FAC. And so, and they, you know, it, it's a sad state that there's a lot of people who justify their getting rid of I know. essentially garbage by saying that yeah. they're going to give it to people who need it. Well, a lot of, I, I, mean, I think I saw a homeless guy once carrying a, a king size bed, king size mattress, and it, it's not feasible. It's not helpful. It's mm -hmm. it's really just junk. Well, and, people uh, were dumping couches behind the old city hall. Yeah. Exactly. So that if if anybody has any indication that that is happening at FAC, we need to talk to them about that because we, we can't allow that to to even get a toehold. But uh, we would certainly 
be concerned about trash at this facility. That that was my concern, and I understand what they were saying about staffing issues and servicing it. But if it's contracted out and you know they're going through there regularly and dumping the cans, then I think you'd want to have the cameras trained on there to make sure that it's not being abused by yeah. More and things. I agree with Commissioner Wood on the fence keeping people from just I don't have to pay for garbage service now so I can dump it for free. So I I mean it's like a very simple deterrent right, right. You know, it's a basic so those would be my two so biggest like concerns would be the fence and the line. will there be any city permits issued as part of this any building permit or this will require um plumbing permits uh obviously the electrical permits but that'll be through lynn county mm -hmm. um we will have a a um our own processes for connecting to water and sewer and and all that sdc fees on this uh this would qualify as a um in one of the areas where you can uh where they can be waived um, okay something that we'll look into doing because this is really about and yes it's an impact on the system but it's we we would probably prefer to set the rates to um, something that would take care of that Okay. But we're, it's something still that's yet to be determined. So any site plan that they would submit to the city for review would have to meet our code for lighting, correct? Um, yeah, I mean, we have. Do we need to make for, that a we condition? Have for commercial lighting within our, our code and that, that would be looked at. Does that need to be a condition that they, or is it just part of your review? Um, of as, their plan as the code stands now um there's some basic language that talks about like trespass i believe okay. um, and so we would we would do the review just based on what's in the code if you um, want something more specific than that um, then it could be added as a condition of approval but it's yes. something that we I just don't want us to determine the lighting i just and if it's part of your guys's review anyway mm -hmm. Or do you feel like we need to make it a condition? Something Sorry, Lynn County processes all the electrical. We don't do any electrical permits. So most of that lighting the plan will go to them, not mm -hmm. us. Okay. Um, but we could get a copy of it for our records. So. <clears throat> so we would have to make sure a condition of approval would be a fence, though. The lighting is that's acceptable true. to the city. So I, I mean, I think that we have a good enough relationship with Lynn County that right. we're not really worried about a, a lighting pro problem. Okay. But if you wish to consider it a, a make a condition of approval, that's certainly with you. Right. The fence, we don't have any kind of requirement for a fence. Okay. Uh, and so that would depend on whatever conditions you wish to. So under our new code, you know, I knew I'd find it. <laughs> <laughs> 1740030 application of public facility standards. Um, any new commercial or commercial expansion does require street lights. Okay. Um, and so they will be required to do it till they will. Okay. So it's already written. It's already. Code. In. Yep. But. Okay. But yeah. fencing is not. No. That's okay. A, is do you know if there's any fencing along here? Along there's no, there's the residential no. side already. Um, well, there is a fen I have a fence permit for the northern side of the tracks. Um, oh, I haven't okay. gone out to see if they've put it in yet, but he did put in a fence permit to run fencing all along the northern okay. uh, side of the tracks. So along the south, um, all those resident the various residential properties and mm -hmm. properties that are there. There's a lot of existing fencing. Okay, um, it's almost I want to say almost the entire length is is fenced. Um, there is a space you can get through over by Bymar by where it's not fenced. Um, okay. So there, there is some existing fencing there, and of course, any property owner is welcome to fence their own property. Uh, and so, that's certainly a possibility. Now, that being said, I, I do know that there's a history of people walking through this area, um, mm -hmm. especially next to Bymar. Yeah. And so my 
might you know you you'd probably want to control the area and fence it there or find some way of diverting that pedestrian traffic a different way. Okay. Because right? when when things aren't when things are are hidden, it, you find more instances of people breaking down a fence or putting holes in the fence or something like that. Um, best way to avoid that is I mean people are lazy, right? They they, mm -hmm. they go for the easiest path. So mm -hmm. if you make a path for them, they're more likely to take it. Um, so it, it's certainly something that could be added. I don't know that it's a security issue for the properties nearby. Um, I think the main thing is people walking through. Okay. Some fencing would probably help deter that. Okay. So commissioners, would we want the whole property fenced or just the operational area fenced? Well, they're only doing part of that property because FAC is doing the other. OK. FAC already has been. They already have their. Yeah, oh, they have it all up. Yeah, it's all up. I mean, that's. And do we leave that up to them? Just require fencing. At a minimum around the operational area. Yeah, or to patch the holes around the operational area. I mean, to fence the entire property might be overkill. Yeah, and very expensive. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of linear it footage. You're saving a whole lot of money in the long run. Fun. The band yeah. Your mic, it's off. You gotta turn off. There you go. <laughs> I, I would just thinking if it was mine, it would save a, lo a whole lot of money in the long run just because of the potential vandalism that if it isn't fenced. Especially because it, you know, at the first it won't be there. There won't necessarily be someone there all the time. Um, and when it's a new facility, that's one I imagine will <laughs> the most the most problems right off the bat when people are going through and they're not used to it being there, taking advantage of whatever they can that's new out there. Yeah, I don't know if we want to recommend that the fence be put along the property line or just around the service area because they'd need a buffer to get. If it was just the service area, they need to tighten yeah. up around that, that they could still service the other side of the fence. As far as brush and mowing and anything that may become a hazard. We could if, just say at, you, at a minimum. If you wanted to um, add fencing as a condition of approval, you could leave it up to their discretion to yeah. uh, which portion of it, yeah. how it would be fenced, but at a minimum of. Yes. You know, uh, at least around the area of the. We're saying it's highly recommended. Oh. Mm. Conditions of approval usually aren't recommended. <laughs> no, it's something that's an actual requirement, but you can leave the. Say that it must be fenced and then leave the manner of fencing up to the applicant. I I failed to ask while they were up here, and I don't know if I can you invite. Could, you could reopen the public hearing and then invite them back up to. Yeah, unless you know. So I'm I'm. I'll ask you first. Do you know if the 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 pay stations would be strictly credit card, or would they at some point have coin or cash in them? I I do not know the answer to that. That that would kind of sway me a little more on being a little harder on the pin scheme. And it does look like there's a nice tree buffer regarding mm -hmm. lighting. So I don't know if we're going to get much lighting. In that case, I would recommend just reopening the public hearing and inviting the applicant. So, it's, 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 it's Everybody okay with anyway. that? All right. So I'm going to go ahead and open the public hearing for CU 2301 at 704. And I would invite our one of our applicants to come back up if you could. It's a quick question for you. And if you could just state your name again for the record. Kristen Davis uh, with Lynn County Parks. So on the pay stations that will be both for the RV dump facility and the potable water fill, are those credit card only units or are they also going to have pay by cash and coin? Or how will those operate? They have their, their pretty custom units. So they'll make them to whatever your suits your needs. They'll do cash. The due credit card, the one that we currently have in our system that's been very successful is credit card only. 
Okay. It does have an override system. If we have an issue with where the credit card goes down, we can issue a guest a PIN number that they're able to go in, use it on the keypad and unlock the, the lock and dump. We do that at Riverbend because we lose power up there quite frequently oh, right. and, are, mm -hmm. and are unable to allow guests to dump. I don't know that we would do that and here. We would probably just have it as a credit card and it'd only be a credit card is what we would use there. So that that's a little bit better. I think I'm not I'm a little concerned with people going down and you know cracking open the unit and trying to Yeah, I know we put a lot of thought into that. Yeah. The units are pretty tough. They're stainless steel and they sit on a on a big uh concrete footing. So they're they're relatively uh vandal proof. Yeah. Um so yeah, we put a lot of thought into that because you have to pretty much make everything out of steel or concrete to keep it done. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> getting so, hard use. Would this be something that, as part of it being a credit card only, there would it have any verbiage on it that would state there's no cash inside? Correct. The manufacturer that we get these from, he, there's stickers right on the top oh, okay. that contains no cash. And Mr. Davis, while we have you up there, we we're talking about the fencing and the security issues that we're we're imagining might occur. Um, at the site, can you give us some insight at other similar sites, maybe that you have, if they have fences, if they don't have fences, what kinds of security issues you come across? Right. Um, we've looked at several of these systems. One system, it's it's pretty much a mirror of our design that we've looked at in Idaho. It's over in um, Coeur d'Alene. We went and toured that. We've looked at the city of Eugene system. A lot of them don't. I mean, they're like the one in Eugene, their overall property is fenced, but it's at their their sewage treatment plant. So mm -hmm. honestly, security on these, there there's not a lot there. There's usually uh, the automated lock system. And there's the dump, so there's you're not really protecting a, a whole lot of stuff. Um, the only thing that I was the one of the reasons I had considered fencing was the foot traffic that traverses that area from Weimar, mm -hmm. you know, moving east. Um, we had had the discussion that if we fenced it all the way to our property line by the railroad tracks on the north, people are probably going to cut a hole in the fence anyway. So we had discussed if we did fence it, setting it back from the railroad tracks to hopefully prevent the vandalism to the fencing. Mm -hmm. Fencing is pretty expensive. When I went out and got a quote, yeah. it was like 20 to $25 a, a foot is yeah. what they quoted us. So that's honestly in our grant that's approved. We didn't even include fencing. We're like, well, if we fence it, then we'll, I guess, phase it in over a couple of years as funding comes available. Our preference was to do it, build it without fencing first, and then if we needed it, add it later. Okay. Right. That might be an interesting thing too. Can we can we add the condition of approval that within a certain amount of calendar days or months that it be fenced? Or at that point, what is the point? If they're having issues, I think they would probably take it upon themselves to fence it. That's correct. I would think so to protect the investment. Uh -huh. Given the county's track record with their facilities, uh, I, I'm really not worried about uh, it declining. Right. Simply because there's clearly a, uh, a history and practice of protecting investments and, mm -hmm. and making the parks nice. So, to be honest, I Agreed. don't think there's a, a major worry here. Okay. And that's our goal is to build this facility. We're we're looking beyond our parks and more to the the regional recreators in the area that right. come through and to serve to serve them as a whole. We've already done stuff with FAC to to really control traffic down there. We went down and installed a boulder line right now. I mean, we're not doing anything with the property, but to keep vehicles off there. Mm -hmm. We just went off the end of FAC's fence and basically bouldered it to the railroad tracks and that way no vehicles can get in there. Our intent is to leave those boulders. We'll remove a, a, a portion of them when we do pave the entry road and we'll install a gate right at the boulder line so that if we do end up not having it 24 hours and you close that, there won't be any vehicle access through there. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? I'm good. satisfied. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks for coming back up. We really appreciate it. Yes, thank you. So we will close the public hearing for CU 2301 again at 709. So do we want to leave it to their discretion? I for, think so. I mean, yeah. 
based on what Blair said with the track record, obviously yeah. they're going to be concerned. It's going to be a fairly expensive system to put in. Yeah. And if there are issues, we know they're going to want to protect their asset there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would be prepared to make a motion if we feel we're ready. I'm good. So I'd move to approve application CU 23-01, which includes adopting the findings of fact listed in the staff report and the conditions of approval listed in section four of the staff report, the setting of the 12 day appeal period from the date of the mailing of the decision and hereby direct staff to prepare an order to be signed by the chair to memorialize the decision. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, and we have two absent, so approve. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming down and answering our questions. Really appreciate it. It makes it a lot easier when someone shows up, so thank you. All right, so that um, we're going to move on to the news or update on the continuing application for our housing needs analysis. Or no, that's yeah. So uh, the the uh, consultants needed more time uh, okay. to finish up the work, so that's why it's asking to be continued again to if we specific date for you. Yes. So that will be the April like sixth um, or fifth or something. And are they still working on addressing DLCD's comments? Yes, they will address all their comments and okay. Uh, and so that would be the April sixth okay. um, commission meeting. Okay. We need to we open just, it. Yeah, we need to yep. open, continue it, and then close it again. All right. So we're going to go ahead and open uh, the application LA twenty three dash zero one at seven twelve. I would make a motion to continue application. Uh, LA 23-01 to our April 6th Planning Commission meeting. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So we'll look forward to seeing what they have for us. Close. Oh, we'll close the public hearing at 7.13. Now should I make the motion? Yes. Now the motion. <laughs> What I said earlier. <laughs> and a second. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry, I meant to catch you before that. Thank <laughs> you so much. I appreciate it. I can't type and think and talk yeah, at the no, same I time. Can't do that. <laughs> I'm a one at a time kind of guy. So all right. So we'll just go from here to staff updates. <laughs> New and amazing. <laughs> has been hard work and lots of stuff that I have dumped on her that is non planning related. Oh, so it kind of is. She's well, <laughs> she's been working on a, on a grant application for Sankey Park, and uh, uh, I feel bad because it, we got a late start because of me. Um, so she's uh, that's on she's record, making, right? She's paying the price, but yeah, um, <laughs> but the deadline's coming up, so it'll be over soon, no matter what, <laughs> <laughs> one way or the other, one way or the other, yes. Um, but other than that, I mean, things have been pretty quiet planning wise. Right? Just just working on getting it moving forward with the TSP and this business with the housing needs analysis. Final edits that you guys will be seeing. Well, I doubt it will be the final edits, but there is edits that um, you have to get it off somewhere. Yes, <laughs> and yeah. I pretty much did this week. I told Blair, I said, I'm done. Um, yeah. I'm gonna. Get yeah. it to DLCD next Friday if you don't tell me. Yeah, the comments. email was like, unless you stop me, this is what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's pretty much what I said. <laughs> so. um, <clears throat> and then on Tuesday, the council authorized a, a an application for a zone change for city-owned property and for school district property. And also the fire district will be joining on that. Essentially, okay. um, as you know, we now have a public Zone, mm -hmm. and, but no property is currently zoned public. Uh, mm -hmm. And so this is essentially going to take all of the city's property and the school district's property and the fire district's property and change the zoning of those properties to public. 
which will make any future changes to those properties much, much simpler, mm -hmm. much easier to do. Excited about that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, anything to streamline the process, I think, is going to benefit any everybody. Yeah, yeah. And that's like a sweeping. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we would we would not see simple things like the conditional use permit for the right. building that the fire department built. It will just be a permitted right. issue. Yeah, yeah. The city has to do that also. So anytime, like when we were doing property line adjustments to yeah. uh, Northside North Park, I had to do a conditional use before yeah. we could do that. Well, we did it. We filed them at the same time, but it's the same thing. School district has to do that. You know, the fire department has to do that because we're all zoned in residential zones, except there's going to be a couple in commercial. So mm -hmm. we have to do it every time. And so it gets to be kind of a pain. And so the school district was like, yeah, we can save a few steps. Let's go. And same with uh, Chief Tyler. So excellent. Yeah, it'll it'll streamline things quite a bit. Nope. There's That's usual month of April I'm in Arizona. So I'll be zooming in for meetings. OK. When with um, might we hear background. back about those um, grants that we uh, sent recommendation letters or letters of support? Oh, that's the one when you were gone. When I was gone. When, the ones when you were gone. Yeah. <laughs> that I got those projects with. sounded really exciting. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I was excited to read about them. Um, those were all. So I was in a meeting earlier this week uh, with uh, somebody from Senator Merkley's office and Senator Wyden's office. And um, those it, it's we may never hear anything right. <laughs> if they get cut um and even if they do it could be a, a year or more before mm -hmm. anything really happens so it's it's kind of a out there very vague uh, there's money of yeah, kind of thing. And it, yeah. And it, anything that involves congress you never really never know how yeah. long it can possibly take i've got bills that have been for decades yeah so <laughs> Did any city staff attend the um, community meeting on Monday evening at the I senior did. center? Yeah. What I did you think? There. Kelsey was there. Uh, and uh, the, our uh, library director, Megan Daisy, was there as well. And there were plenty of other from the, others from the public thing. What did you think? Uh, I thought it was good. It was it was one of those things where I would I would like to have multiple organizations in this in the city go through the same process and hopefully get on the same page. Um, but overall, I thought it was pretty good. Oh, I do have, I wrote myself a note. Henry's training question. Henry asked that oh, question yeah. about if you had an application. Right. And whether you excuse yourself. So I discussed this with Blair. And it, you would just be as you were an applicant. You would not come up and sit up for the planning commission. You would sit out in the audience. You would testify on your own behalf, and you would go sit back down. So you would not be a part of the of that day. Okay. Okay. So. Just that hearing. When it, well for that just, for that hearing. Just for yeah, that hearing. Just that yeah. hearing. Oh, okay. just that yeah. oh, and then come back once, upon the panel. Well, once once there once that issue has been decided, you come back up. So okay. Participate in the rest of it. So would we? Maybe if that does occur, put that early on the docket. So ideally, you would either put it at the end or in the middle or something. Not, not the middle. Either at the at the beginning or at the end of the meeting, just to make it easier, probably. Right. But on the other hand, we usually don't have so many applications at the same time that it might be the only application uh, on that night. And the chips fall. Okay. Um. One item, I'm doing a, uh, we have a training meeting with the council on Saturday. And so I have a presentation on my department to kind of go over how things work. And one of the sections of my presentation is, what does the council need to know? And so there's uh, a few items from staff perspective that I'll be including there, but it just occurred to me, if there are any items that you as, as a planning commission want to make sure that the council is aware of, I'd be happy to put that in my presentation. So I, I think the one thing I would probably throw out is we've we've talked and agreed upon a little bit that if if we find an issue that we really are adamant about that we will be sending somebody to a city council meeting on behalf of planning commission. If there's any right. big issue that 
we've deliberated on several meetings in a row or we're just very adamant about in general that we will send a representative. And I think that's not a big deal. I don't know if they need to know that or. Uh, it's it, as long as it's not. I mean, <laughs> if you're if it's a. I guess it depends on the on the item. If if it's just an application for a zone change, say, or somebody's right application that they're putting in, and you've already recommended it, um, I I'm not sure that it would be. If it was appealed, it probably wouldn't look good to have um, have a the planning commission continue to press an issue. But if it's something like a development code change or something that's more internal to the city and not having to do with a specific applicant. Um, then I, I don't think that there's any problem with that. I think that's certainly you, your citizens. You have the right to talk and, to the council as much as any. I, I would see if if we could encourage them if they have any questions and if they if they ask for a representative to come to explain something that mm -hmm. that we would be able to provide. I think any number of us would be willing to on behalf of the commission go to a city council meeting. Well, I think specifically when we make recommendations that are outside the staff report recommendations, I think that's really the main when we decided we were going to make sure we sent somebody so yeah. we could explain why we made our additional recommendation. Mm -hmm. OK. Sure. OK, we could give them a transcription of our of the minutes. Well, that they do get a, a, they do. usually with every uh, item that comes from Planning Commission to the City Council. Uh, Angela includes the minutes in the that's report. part of their staff report. Okay. Minutes from him. Oh, okay. Okay. Anything else? All right, so we'll go ahead and adjourn the Planning Commission meeting for March 16th, 2023 at 722. Is it going to be dark outside? I'm still mm.